Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my linear algebra tutorial series. This part of the tutorial is all about determinants. And basically, every square matrix has a determinant, and they're going to help us identify and find inverses, as well as solve equations, and a whole bunch more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's say we have a matrix A, and it has A, B, C, and D. Well, the determinant of A would be equal to A times D minus B times C. And another way to write this matrix as a determinant is to just use straight bars like this. Now, some things that we get from calculating a determinant is that if we would get the determinant of a matrix and it is equal to zero. That means the matrix doesn't have an inverse. And if it is not equal to zero, that means it has an inverse. But you may ask yourself, well, what do I do? You said that you can go and get a determinant for any square matrix. So what exactly do I do if I have a three by three matrix? So let's say we have matrix A, and it has these letters inside of it. Basically, to find the determinant of A, we are just going to be using parts of the matrix. So we are going to have A, which is going to be multiplied times, and we will use only that part of the matrix that is not in the row of A, nor the column of A which is going to work out to be E, F, H, and I. Then we get the negative for B. And the way this is going to work is you're going to have positive, and the next one's going to be negative, positive, negative, and so forth and so on. And then you're going to get the determinant for everything, once again, that is not in the row of B nor the column of B. So we're going to get D, F, G, I. So just plug D, F, G, and I in there. Then we're going to do plus. Remember I said plus, negative, plus, negative, plus, negative. We'll put C inside of there. And we'll get D, E, G, and H. Exactly like that. And another way of writing this would be to say A, E, I, minus F, H, minus B, D, I, minus F, G, plus C, D, H, minus E, and G. Exactly like that. And if there was a D, of course, this would be negative D, and so forth and so on. Now, for larger matrices, larger than 3 by 3, you can continue with this formula until you get to a two by two matrix that you can then use with the formula A, D minus B, C. But I'm gonna show you another way to get larger matrices. So let's work through an example here. So let's say we have four, five, one, negative two, six, two, one, four, and three. Well, the determinant for this would end up being four times six times three minus two times four. And this is gonna end up being 10 minus five, negative two times three minus two times one. And determinants are going to make a lot of things in the past that were complicated, very easy to perform or calculate as you will see in the videos that come up next. All right, and this works out to be negative eight, and this works out to be negative 14. And then if we take four times 10 minus five times negative eight plus, well, negative 14, which is gonna be a minus 14, that is going to be equal to 66. So that's how we go and calculate the determinant. Okay, so now let's go and work with a really large one and I will show you an alternative way to going and finding determinants. 
This is going to be a four by four determinant. And there's going to be a lot of calculating with this guy. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to put it in row echelon form. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to start off. I'm going to get one half R1 plus R2 and put that in R2. And that is going to leave us with, you know what? I'm just going to fill in the R2 part of it. I think you'll be able to follow this fine. So this is going to be 0, 17 over 2, 5 over 2, and 0. All right, then what am I going to do? Just refer to this matrix over here so I don't have to write a whole lot. Well, now what I want to do is I want to take R3 minus 1 fourth R1 and put that into R3. So this time I'll just be updating R3. And that's going to leave this with zero. Remember, I'm putting this in to row echelon form, not reduced row echelon form. And one half, so that's row three. After this, I'm going to work on R4. And I'm going to say R4 minus 3 fourth minus R1. And put that result into R4. See if I can fit all this in here. So I'm only going to put in the values for R4 this time, which are going to be 0, negative 7 over 4, 13 over 4, and 3 over 2. All right. Up next, I'm going to just go and further simplify row 3. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take row 3 minus 11 over 34 times R2 and I'm going to put that result in R3 and I decided to fill in all the other values okay so let's update R3 here this is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 this is going to be 33 over 17 and this is going to be 1 half then what do I want to do? Well, I want to update R4. I'm going to take R4 plus 7 over 34 times R2 and then put that result in R4. So let's go and just fill in the changed value of R4, which is going to be 0, 0, 64 over 17 and... 3 over 2. Almost done. I want to swap R3 and R4. So let's go and move this guy in right about here. And let's get this guy and move it in right there. And that's looking pretty good. And the only thing that I have to do now to finish this up and put it into row echelon form is to take R4 minus 33 over 64 times R3 and put that into R4. And let's just, just so I have a lot of room here, I'm just going to correct R4 right here in the bottom of the screen, which means this is going to become a zero. And then we're going to have negative 35 over 128. Hopefully you can see all that and it all makes sense. I think it does. Okay, so now what we can do is to find our determinant we can come in and just multiply the 4 times the 17 and a half times the 64 over 17 times the negative 35 over 128. And that's going to give us our determinant as well. So sometimes this is considerably easier to do rather than shuffling around all of the different changing forms of the matrix. The only thing to be aware of, however, is that and if we go and multiply this through this is going to be a negative 35 but however if you ever interchange any rules you are going to have to get the negation of whatever this value is and remember we swapped these two rows here so that means that the ultimate determinant is going to be the negation of negative 35, which is going to end up being equal 
235. All right, so there is a bunch of ways of finding determinants using just about any type of square matrix. And in the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how powerful and useful determinants can be. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.